One, two, three, that's the A! <laughs> I wasn't okay. on yet. To finish off our foot sweep series, I want to look at one that's a little bit cheeky. <laughs> so I'm actually going to step on his foot, which is a little bit rude. But it's important when I step on his foot, I am not stepping with my heel down. What I'm looking to do is put my weight on my toes and the arch of my foot goes over his foot. So my weight's on my toes. I'm not really, I'm not stamping on his foot. That would be illegal and that would be really rude. I'm really just kind of blocking his foot. I'm going to do my little shuffle in. I step and plant. I drive him backwards as his weight transfers there. I keep driving into him. And then I sweep across with this foot to take him to the ground. So it's a little bit of a cheeky move. You know, back in the old days when I used to do a bit of boxing, sometimes you step on that lead leg as you step it foot as you step in with a jab. Now, that's definitely illegal, but it's kind of hard to prove that I did it on purpose. You know, the second I'm stepping on his foot, his attention goes down there, and it's easier for me to get that in there. But this is kind of the same thing. As I step on that and drive through, his attention is to down there, and he's really off balance. So it's a little bit cheeky, but it's very effective. And it's a way to mix things up. Again, I'm not stamping on his foot, I'm just stepping over it. Okay, so we mix that in with all of our other sweeps. So at this point, we've got a full set of foot sweeps. I can get him moving sideways. So if we're moving sideways, as that comes in, I can sweep this foot across. As I've got him circling, I can sweep here and sweep him over there. I can step to the outside and I can sweep this foot out. I can turn my hip in and I can sweep this foot out from under him. And then this last one, I'm stepping over and then sweeping. This works in the same way as the other ones where we're coming forwards and backwards and I just do a little skip step. So when I mix all of these foot sweeps up, I just get into a position where we're moving around and I get him unbalanced, and I just wait until he's off balance. He's got a foot that's out of place and I'll sweep it out. And as I keep saying, even if the sweep doesn't completely take him down, it's gonna off balance him enough that he's gonna set up one of my other throws. So it's a great thing to just practice with a partner, to just practice going 50%, working around and just tapping each other's feet, and every now and then put a little bit more on and go into a full throw. But on the ground, we wanted to carry on from the techniques we saw on Tuesday, which I was using the Bravo choke, which uses this piece of gear around his neck. I'm gonna use basically the exact same principles, but I'm gonna do it from a closed guard. I like a lot to get this grip. I get this grip here and break it down his posture. If he's got this hand here, so he's bracing with this hand, and he's using that to create posture. I can come across this arm, drive it into his elbow and break him down. From here, I've got to start looking for all my cross chokes. But if he knows anything about jujitsu, he's going to start defending by putting his hands inside. Even if I get over the top and I go for this cross choke now, I'm not going to finish that against these strong hands. Okay? But when he's committed hard here to the defense, always you shut one door. Another one opens. I am going to bring this gi out. I can open this leg I, to make space. You know, sometimes my leg's in the way and I can't find a gi. I can open this leg because if he goes back with this hand to try and control my leg and, and pass, the second he goes back with that, wow, I'm back into my choke. Okay? So I can use this space. I clear the gi. I'm going to pass the gi over his head and I fold my wrist over and I hold him down to me, controlling his posture. With my free hand, I now swap my grip. I'm now gonna make my first switch of hips. My foot goes here, and I drive him across. I can use my elbow to create the angle, and get a nice tight grip on this gi. My elbow is gonna come into his body. I've locked this across, he's carotid on this side. My move here is to put my foot in his hip and turn him. When I turn to 90 degrees, the gi is there perfectly. I bring him back and I choke. Sorry. Okay. 
So I'm choking the same cross stroke pressure that we always use. So that's my first attack. Using the same setup, when I come across to here, drive this down, get to here. What he'll sometimes start to do is he will take this hand up inside my bicep. He's gonna block me, stop me from reaching across. From here, I cannot reach across and grab for the choke. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna control the sleeve so that this is locked to me and I make the same movement. My foot's in his hip, I'm tight to him. And I am going to rotate him, and bring this across. This is perfect now for me to reach up and take my armbar. Squeeze my knees, elevate my hips. Off this same setup, pass this across. So, get this grip. This time, I'm trying to come back here, but this hand is the one that's a problem. Some people get really good. He's blocking with this hand and his elbow's back into my knee. So I can't create the leverage up under his armpit to turn him. And from here, look, I could grip this here, but that's never gonna choke him. Now, a lot of people teach to grip here and rip across. But this guy's strong. If I'm pulling here, and he's pulling back. I know Russ is stronger than me, okay? I have no ego on that. Russ spends his more time in the weight room than me. He's bigger and stronger than me. We're using the same muscle set. I'm pulling this way. He's pulling that way. He's going to beat me in that, in that rowing strength competition. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to rip this across. What I do instead, I reach over his elbow. My knee can help push this up and I'm going to hinge this up and across. That is a movement he cannot resist. As I lift that up, it's a different set of muscles and a weaker set of muscles. I've now got him basically in an arm triangle. I can reach nice and deep up over here and crush him to finish that choke. Or I can go in here and finish the choke here. I got two choices, okay? Now the final thing I want to look at, as I'm reaching and I'm bringing this across here, what sometimes happens is this guy really gets defensive on the inside. So maybe I've made this switch. Even if I make this switch, because he's controlling this arm, when I come across here, these hands are going to block this out here. I do not have that control. Even if I get deep on this side, he is creating space this side. So that's not gonna work for me. But this arm is now committed to the inside. So I'm going to reach with this hand. I'm gonna lock this arm in and I can come under this, rotate, come up, and I come up in such a beautiful position to attack. So this is the exact set of attacks that we were using on Tuesday. That Bravo choke, but we're using the Bravo choke from the knee. And of course, the whole way through this setup, as I'm going for things, I'm working for this, I'm controlling this, and this hand's down, he's down, and on the inside, I can step up over, go to a triangle. You know, the whole time I'm working through this, if I'm working for this, and this arm's coming up here, and he's defending up here, I can get up and over this and attack this arm. I can get into any of my other attacks by setting up the choke, I am causing him to defend. This is a very strong choke. If he does not defend the choke, he will go to sleep. So he has to legitimately defend it. When he legitimately defends it, it's gonna open up other attacks. The finesse, as we learn, is when to let one thing go and go for the next thing instead. Or when to insist on the thing we're already going for. That isn't something I can tell you a direct line on. That only comes with time on the map. Thanks for helping out tonight. Good training.